Now, let's see what this deformation, what this delta L depends upon. So, for that, let's take different cases. So, let's say I have two rods over here, both of the same length and same area of cross section. But in one case, the magnitude of the force I'm applying over here is greater than the magnitude of the force I apply over here. Which do you think will have a greater deformation? Now, obviously, I mean, this seems pretty obvious, right? A greater force, so the deformation should be greater. And yes, that's the case. So we find that the this delta L increases if F increases. Fine, okay. Now, what about, let's change another variable. What about the length? So let's say I have one rod over here of small length, slightly shorter length, and another rod of a longer length. And I keep the area of cross section same. And also, I apply the same force. That is, the magnitude of the forces I apply in both these cases are the same. Now, which do you think will have a greater deformation or a greater delta L? Uh, think about it. No, you might have played with this. If you've ever played with an eraser when you were young, uh, if you say I have a small eraser and a large eraser, and if you try to compress both or elongate both, which is easier? You would have found that the longer eraser was easier to elongate. Yes, that's exactly what is true over here as well. So we do find experimentally that as the length increases, then the delta L also increases. So in these two cases, if the magnitude of the force is the same, delta L is greater if length is greater. Okay. Now what else? What about area? Now again, let's say I have two rods. One, both have the same length. And also, I'm applying the same force on both in both these cases, but one has a, sh a smaller, you know, area of cross section, and the other has a larger area of cross section, which will have a greater delta L. Now, again, intuitively or by experience, you should say that the one that has a smaller area of cross section will actually be easier to pull, right? So, therefore, the delta L will be greater, and that is the case. So, the one with the smaller area of cross section will have a greater delta L. And the one with the larger area of cross section will have a smaller delta L. So you can see here that delta L is directly proportional to F, directly proportional to L, but inversely proportional to A. Now, if I rearrange this, what do I get? I get that F by A divided by delta L by L is a constant. And from, from the quantities that I just defined, we basically get that stress by strain is a constant. So this law is called Hooke's law. It was initially proposed by Robert Hooke, who was a contemporary of Isaac Newton. So one thing to note here, that this law, stress by strain is a constant, is even though it's called the law, is not valid in all cases. It is valid only for cases where the stresses and the strain produced are very small. So in those cases, this law is valid. And when you're dealing with longitudinal stress and longitudinal strain, so when you say you have longitudinal stress and longitudinal strain, so that stress by strain that constant that you get is called the Young's modulus of elasticity. It's generally denoted by Y, right? Now, the unit for this constant is also uh, Newton per meter squared because strain is a dimensionless quantity, right? And this constant is basically constant for a particular material. So that basically means, say, let's say I have steel. Now, irrespective of the dimensions of this body of steel or this piece of steel, irrespective of length, mass, etc., etc., uh, the Young's modulus will always be the same. The stress by strain that I produce will always be constant. And of course, it also doesn't depend on where I do it, when I do it, etc, etc. So it's constant for a particular material. Now, one more thing that I find very often is that most students get confused between the words stress, the meaning of the word stress and the meaning of the word strain. And I frankly don't know why. It's probably because both these words start with str and str. I don't know. But a simple way to remember what they actually mean is like this. So. See, we know, uh, say before an exam, you, you feel stressed, right? It's probably because you're under a lot of pressure. And we know pressure is force per area. So therefore, stress is always equal to force per area. Now, similarly, strain. Now, uh, when do we use strain? So we might, you might say that, see, I strained my leg, right? When you, when you have a muscle pull, right? when you stretch your foot or you stretch your leg, you strain your muscle, right? So therefore, strain is related to elongation or relative elongation, which is nothing but delta L by L. So this is just a simple way to remember the meanings of the words stress and strain. So till now, I told you that Hooke's law is valid only up to a certain limit and only for small stresses. 
but how do we find that and more importantly what happens beyond that point if i increase the stress beyond that point uh, see we also know that at some point the if i increase the stress too much a body will break right we have seen stuff breaking so how does all this happen to analyze this let's do a simple exercise so let's take let's say a, a metallic wire like this and uh, plot the stress versus strain graph so we'll apply a stress see observe the strain and plot a graph with the stress on the y axis and the strain on the x axis okay so let's do that so we have this is our normal length of the wire so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm i'm going to start applying a slow stress like slowly i'm going to increase the length so obviously we know that as i increase as i keep increasing the stress from hooke's law we know that the strain will also increase so therefore basically as i keep increasing f or the force the elongation will keep increasing right and we find that it will the if you draw the graph it will be proportional so therefore it will be a straight line it will increase like this and the slope of this graph will be equal to y which is the young's modulus okay all that is fine also if i stop in between and if i bring it back slowly that is if i reduce the force slowly and i let go at the end it will come back to its original shape right the final length that it has is original so what i'm basically saying is that the the extension that we provide is reversible okay all right all that is fine we'll keep so i'm going to keep doing this so you will find that till you reach a point let's say somewhere let's call it a on the graph till you reach a point a this proportionality is valid but what happens is after if i increase the stress beyond that point the strain that i produce is actually much greater it's no longer it's no longer proportional okay so what basically means is that so till before that point a the same stress produced some sort of strain right but after that point if i for the same increase in stress the increase in strain is greater or rather the slope of the graph will basically reduce so this is what has happened so that point a till where the proportionality is valid you can call it's called the proportionality limit okay and beyond that there is no more proportionality okay so it, that happens but even though the proportionality is not valid if i bring it back right it will if i bring the if i reduce the force slowly it will still come back to its original length so it is still completely elastic even though the proportionality is not valid okay fine but next comes let's say i'll take another point b okay so after that point b now now that i have increased the stress beyond that point b now if i bring it back slowly what i find is at zero stress there is a net strain there is a net elongation or in other words we've created a permanent deformation a, a permanent elongation so that point b is called the yield point or the elastic limit so that basically means that if i produce a stress beyond that point b if i bring it back slowly i will end up making a permanent deformation or permanent elongation now that point as i said is called the yield point and the stress associated with that point is called the yield stress now what happens beyond that what happens if i increase the stress beyond that so what we find is so till it reaches till the graph reaches a point c the the strain for a corresponding increase in stress is very large so basically for even for a small force the elongation produced is very large so the slope of the graph from b to c is very less it's very small so that's what happens and then from c onwards that is if i increase the stress right beyond c then the slope basically increases so the strain produced is not as much as compared to the previous case but yeah so the slope increases like that okay till it reaches a point d which is the maximum stress possible it's basically called the ultimate tensile strength so basically we've reached a point where the the wire is almost going to fracture almost going to break apart so at that point when you increase the stress even further i mean you don't even have to increase the stress further to increase the extension or increase the strain so what happens is the curve goes down that basically means that to you even if you in, reduce the stress beyond that point the elongation will increase right if you reduce the stress the strain will increase so that's what that conveys and finally we reach a point e which is called the fracture point where the wire finally gives way and breaks up so let me just explain that graph again a little slowly 
so we have a wire which for which you are increasing the stress right so if you see the graph so till it reaches a point a which we call the proportionality limit hooke's law is still valid so we find that stress by strain is always a constant and the slope is equal to the young's modulus simple now but from a to b stress by strain is no longer a, or it's no longer the same constant so it is not directly proportional but till a point b which we call the yield point or the elastic limit uh, only till there elasticity is seen that is if till a, till i reach the point b if i stop in between somewhere and i bring it back very slowly if i reduce the force very slowly it will come back to its original length but if i give a stress that's beyond the point b right and then if i try to bring it back it will not reach the original length it will reach some extra length so at zero stress also there will be some extra length so you end up having a permanent elongation okay so that point b is called the elastic limit now then of course there is a point c there's another point c where from b to c if you go even for a small increase in stress there's a very large increase in strain right so for small force also large elongation and then from c onwards now the slope is increased it's not that small it's slightly increased so even for a slight it's not the elongation is not as much as the previous case so but from c we reach a point d d is basically the maximum stress that this this wire can withstand so the, it can't go that's called the ultimate tensile stress now what that means is that beyond d even if you reduce the stress right, even if you reduce the force the strain will still increase that is the elongation will still increase right because it's almost going to break and then finally at the point e you can take no more and it will break completely at that point the strain is too much and it will break